Thank you, Jesus. We're so grateful for you bringing us to a place that we can not have to break down every week. <laughs> uh, it's so good to see everybody. Thank you all for joining us on our first morning here at the Red Cliffs. Um, we're going to get started. I wanted to share a verse, Psalm 44, 3. For by their own sword they did not possess the land, and their own arm did not save them. But your right hand and your arm and the light of your presence, for you favored them. So we are favored. And as we go into a new season, a season of a season of war, a season of you know new beginnings, a season of taking over the land. We got to remember it is his arm in his favor in his presence in his sword that fights for us and fights goes before us so jesus holy spirit come have your have your way in this place have your way in every single one of our hearts have your way through the worship be glorified in the worship have your way in the bringing of the word be glorified in all that goes on today be glorified in our lives be glorified in our praises be glorified in our hearts and we say yes to you and we say come lord jesus come with the light and the fire of your presence and your favor in jesus name we worship you and we thank you and all the church says amen
Well, I want to share a really cool, I heard her awesome testimony um, the other day, and I wanted to share it. I'm Pastor Justin Gingrich, by the way, if you don't know who I am. Um, and I, anyway, I heard this testimony just last week uh, from, where's Sharon? Oh, here, Susan, sorry, I said Sharon. Susan. From, uh, Susan's family comes in town um, for Christmas almost every year, and they brought some friends of theirs that two years ago had come, and his name was Chris, and he came up to me and shared this testimony, and he said, two years ago, Justin, you called me out and you gave me a prophetic word, and he started telling me about the word, because I didn't remember it. Um, I mean, I give lots of people words, so it's always, you know, I don't usually remember them. I, I vaguely remembered the, the gist of it, and then he just started sharing with me, and he's like... So he started telling me all, like, the word, and it's a word that I don't give very many people. I told him that, um, that he had a, cre- a gift of creativity and business, and that God was going to use him to create multiple businesses, and that he was actually going to be blessed um, financially. And that's the one I don't, I usually kind of stay away from that part of words. I don't usually tell people, hey, you're going to be rich. <laughs> um, but I felt really strongly on this one. Um, like, I don't tell people who they're going to marry either. Because there's this thing called free will. And I like, I like, you know, I might be like, hey, this is a good person for you, but I'll never say this is your spouse because I just like to respect people's free will on that. And I think God does too. So anyway, so I was telling him, I'm like, I actually believe you're going to make a lot of money and God's going to use you to... Uh, it, finance his kingdom in a lot of really cool ways and your and just from your creativity and business and and I said and also what was the other part was word was and also God I really felt God wanted me to tell you that he, your love for him is going to be revealed in how well you love your family so good so he He's like, but I have to share with you. He was a new believer. Trent, um, Susan's son, had actually led him to the Lord like only a couple months before that. Yeah, and the apart. yeah. and that's what he was saying. He came up to me. He goes, I have to tell you where I was. I was in bankruptcy. I was being sued by eight different people. All of my businesses were falling apart. My wife was saying that she was going to leave me. We were getting ready to sign papers. My daughter was in shambles. And he, then he just was saying, like, he goes, my whole life was a huge wreck. And he goes, and I was struggling with thoughts of just ending it all, of just going in the office and blowing my head off. Wow. And, I, and I just gave him that simple word. And he goes, I wrote every word of it down, and I looked at it every day because it gave me just a little bit of hope. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And, but what I, I want you to hear, I want you to hear this side of it, because as he was sharing with me, I was just getting super encouraged. And he said, I put that word in front of me every day, and I prayed about it every day. And I said, this is what, this is what God has for me. And it just gave me that little bit of hope to hold on to something. And he goes, I just kept going after it. I started praying for my family. He's like, I have now made multiple millions of dollars with multiple companies. I gave, he's like, Hopefully he doesn't care if I share this, but he's like, I gave over six figures to churches and to ministries last year. He's like, my wife and I are doing awesome. We're back together. We're all in Bible school. Come on. And he just started sharing like how in two years' time, his life went from where he was actually thinking of ending it all to where he now has purpose and a plan and God is using him and they are growing together and it's like oh that's the prophetic yes but I want to share one other thing I want to share about that testimony is actually if he had ignored the word none of that would have happened so there is two sides to the prophetic amen there is hey hey God uses us to come sometimes we're the one who comes alongside and we get to give the quick word but guess what it, it, took, it was his faithfulness to believe and have faith in what God had for him, to have faith in the goodness of God and to keep that before his face. You hear me, church? That's what led to the breakthrough. The word was just the little beginning part that cracked open the, the, the ray of hope. Amen? 
Some of you have gotten words, and I want to say it's not going to happen if you ignore them or set them on the shelf and don't do anything with it. God is like, do you believe me? Then your life will prove it by how you live. Amen? Amen? So those, some of those words, you guys, why isn't this happening? It's like, you got to work. Amen? You, like, put it to faith. Faith looks like something. Yes. Hallelujah. Grab those words. Go back to those words. I don't know how many times I've gone back to prophetic words and put them in front of me again to remind myself when I've lost or I've been grabbing hold of dumb ideas about my identity or whatever. You know what I'm talking about. You start struggling with that stuff, then go back to those other words like, no, this is who God says I am. This is what he says he has for me. I believe he's good, and I'm going to keep going after it, whether I feel it or not, whether I see it or not. Hallelujah. Justin, come on up. Welcome, Justin Matherson. I was just super stoked. My favorite part was that his family's together. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you for restored families. Just stretch your hands out to Justin. He's going to be bringing the word today. Lord Jesus, I just thank you for this man of God. I thank you for his, um, how much he eats your word up. And I thank you so much that we get to um, receive from all of the well that's inside of him, of what you have placed in him. And I pray, Father, we just open our hearts to all that you and your spirit are going to say to us today, and we may grow and bear fruit 60, 80, 100 fold. Amen. I'm hoping for a testimony like that to happen. I just uh, prayed for someone this week um, for a, a young lady who works at the restaurant where uh, we make our salsa, and um, she's she's married and can't have babies, and uh, she's like in her early 30s, and it's just breaking her heart hearing the doctors, bad report after bad report, and so, um, and I, I had known this before, and um, but the Lord just, it was, it was interesting, this week, this past week, he just pressed it on my heart to, to ask her about that, and uh, I mean, that's a kind of a personal question to ask someone, but I, I just felt like the Lord said ask, and so, um, turns out she's getting ready to um, they're going to do some procedures and stuff coming up soon. So it's like, no wonder why he wanted me to ask, because he want, wanted me to pray into that with her. And um, she doesn't know the Lord yet, but when the miracle happens, she's going to meet him. <laughs> and um, yeah, so I just um, had her put her hand on her stomach and just prayed over her body. And she was perfectly OK with that, um, just because I don't like I'm not comfortable touching a woman's stomach other than my wife. <laughs> So I just wanted to throw that in there. <laughs> if you're a man and you're going to pray for a woman in public, don't touch her stomach. <laughs> it's not appropriate. We have to use wisdom with our revelation, right? <laughs> um, anyway, so I'm going to be uh, just sharing a, a vision that I had. Actually, this, this vision came to me Christmas morning, and, uh, and it, it was right in line with... Um, the stuff that Justin started sharing, like Christmas was on a Saturday. Then on Sunday, the next day, he, you know, he felt like he gave the word about being in a season of war. Do you guys remember that? He talked about it more last week, too. But, um, yeah, yeah, it was a good Christmas message. I was just drinking my coffee. You know, I, I didn't, I was just enjoying my time with the Lord. And then all of a sudden, he just gave me this huge download. And with it, like, like a, a whole bunch of Bible verses to go with it. It was just like, here's the download, brrr, Bible verses, boom. Just like, whoa, whoa, okay, boom, boom, boom. Just write it all down. <laughs> like, wow, okay. So I'm, I'm excited to release it. And um, I feel like it's going to, the word that I got, um, one of the words that I got about this word was that, that we were going to be cut to the heart by it. Because <laughs> um, it is kind of a heavy word, but but it's, but it's encouragement at the same time. Um, and what I mean it's heavy, it's not like condemning or judging or anything like that, but, but it's like, like he's been saying, like this season of, of war, this, this season that we're in right now, it's calling for some real intentionality. And um, one of the main areas that we need to be intentional about, or one of the things that we need to be really intentional about is our thoughts and our words. 
those are two huge areas. I, I feel like the majority of the war is, is going to be right there in your thoughts and your words. And so um, the, what I saw was I saw two armies. I saw an army of angels and an army of demons. Okay, and this is, like I said, this was a vision. This was God using my imagination to speak to me. Okay, so just know that. And, um, and they all had swords, right? The angels had swords, and the, the demons had swords. And um, their swords were, were words, okay? And, um, and so the, the, the demonic army had, had swords with words written on them, uh, like hate, lust, pride, division, things like that, just all that yucky stuff. <laughs> you can look at the deeds of the flesh in Galatians 5, and those, all those things were, were, on, were on their swords. And, um, and then the angels had swords with words like love, purity, honor, unity, and, um, and like the fruits of the Spirit, things like that were, were written on their swords. And um, what I saw was that these, these armies were given power by the words that were being released by people. And so what people were saying was, was giving them power to win the war against the opposing army. Does that make sense? And so, um, and, and, what, and kind of what I felt was like, this was a picture of the armies over individuals, over families, over churches, over cities. There's, there's a similar war like this going on and all these different um, areas. So over your personal life, right? What you agree with and what you speak, you're going to be given power to something. And you're going to be dictating what kingdom wins in your life. The kingdom of darkness or the kingdom of light. Right? And so and, and there's, there's these three things that we need to really be... Uh, mindful of uh, and that's the thought the agreement and the spoken word and and we're going to talk a little bit about that so things start with a thought and then you uh, you partner with it or you reject it and then if you agree with it and you speak it you're going to release something either for either for god or for the devil and so there, and, and some of these Bible verses, are, it, it just jumped out, uh, jumped out the page at me. And I was just like, wow, this is like, this is vital. Like, this is some, this is some serious stuff. We don't want to take lightly. So um, let's, let's just go ahead and look at some of these verses. The first one is um, probably the most popular one about this kind of stuff. And it's in Proverbs 18, verse, uh, verse 21. I'm going to read it out of, a, out of the King James first, and then in the New Living Translation, I have a parallel Bible here, so I have two Bibles in one. I'm twice as cool as anyone else. <laughs> What'd you say? Oh, yeah, oh, no, he's cheating. He has a cell phone. He's like, I got like 30. I'm like, man, that's not fair. It's not fair, man. Yeah. So um, the King James, it says, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof, or they who love it shall eat its fruit. Uh, the New Living Translation says, the tongue can bring death or life. Those who love to talk will reap the consequences. <laughs> I'm just going to read through some of these and, you know, we'll chat if we need to. <laughs> Uh, the next one is Proverbs 11, verse 11. This was one of those ones that it was like a ton of bricks. <clears throat> Proverbs 11, 11. So this is, I'm reading out of the King James. By the blessing of the upright, the city is exalted, but it is overthrown by the mouth of the wicked. 
but the mouth of the the talk of the wicked tears it apart is what it says in the New Living Translation. But but I mean, think about that. Cities rise and fall based on what's being spoken. <laughs> I mean that that's that's vital, right? I mean, we're made in the image of God, so He spoke and the world was made. When we speak, things are made, things happen, things shift, either in for for bad or for good. And there's so much in the book of Proverbs about your words, right? And in Psalms, David even says, like, he prayed that God would set a guard over his mouth, right? Like, guard the words that come out of my mouth. Go to uh, Ecclesiastes 10. Ecclesiastes 10, <clears throat> verse 20. King James says, Curse not the king, no, not in your thought. Do not curse the rich in your bedroom, for a bird of the air shall carry the voice, and that which has wings shall tell the matter. <laughs> I've had this, I've, I've literally seen this happen in my life once. We, when we first... Uh, got baptized in the spirit, started speaking in tongues and praying for healing and doing all that crazy stuff that Jesus did. <laughs> we, uh, yeah, nor we started being normal Christians. We, uh, we were part of a, a ministry that didn't believe in all that stuff. And so uh, when we shared our experience with them and what we were starting to believe and what we were starting to go after and things we were starting to see, they... They didn't like it, right? And so um, we had a long, I don't know, two or three months of kind of going back and forth, kind of arguing with these people and trying to get them to know, like, we're not worshiping demons. We're not trying to turn away from God, you know, whatever. And so one night I had a dream and I was talking to one of these people and uh, they were just like chewing me out, right, in this dream, just like. I don't know, just coming at me with all kind of hateful words. And in the dream, this person just turned into a giant black, like dark uh, sword or like a knife, <laughs> like a giant blade. Like as they were talking to me, they just shifted and turned into a big black blade. And I was just like, what the heck? And then I woke up. <laughs> what the heck was that? And then I realized, I mean, there's a lot of verses in the Bible about words cutting like a sword and all that kind of stuff and and then i also when i came across this verse it's like it's like a bird shall tell the matter right when if you're speaking about someone or you're partnering in a in, a, in your thoughts in an evil way towards someone that is going to travel in the spirit and it that person you're, there's going to be animosity between you and that person they might not they might not have a dream like i did and like god show them what's going on but you're going to feel a disconnect from that person. So, so what do you do? How, how do you combat that, right? You take every thought captive. That's what you do. Because like I said, it starts with a thought, an agreement, and then the spoken word where you literally it will either release a curse over someone's life or you will release a blessing. And we get to be the ones to decide. Now, it doesn't mean every time someone speaks evil towards you if they, that a curse is going to come on your life because guess what? Some people really abide in Christ and they have the, the power of God surrounding them. And it says that a curse without cause will not land on its target. Amen. Right? But if you're speaking against someone who doesn't have that sort of, who's, who's not abiding in Christ, you might be releasing stuff over them just like the kind of stuff that witches do. You're, you're, you're acting no different than, than a witch in that situation. Because how do they curse people? With words, <laughs> right? That's how they do it. So we, that's why witchcraft is one of the deeds of the flesh. Because it's something that people do when they're in the flesh, when, when they're not walking in the spirit. And so we have to walk in wisdom. Because we do not want to be on that side of the fence. Because we will be held accountable by our words, Amen. for the words we speak. And we'll look at, at that here in a second. And um, in 2 Kings uh, chapter 2, 
we don't have to turn there, but you guys probably remember the story. You remember when uh, those boys were like taunting uh, Elisha the prophet, and then he, it says he turns and curses them in the name of the Lord. What happened? Yeah, two, the King, King James says two she bears came out and just gobbled them up. It's like two mama bears came out and just killed like 40 something kids. I don't know if he was intending that to happen. It doesn't say that he cursed them and told bears to come. And I also don't think that he was partnering with the Holy Spirit when he did that. It doesn't say he was. It never says the Holy Spirit came upon him and he cursed them. It doesn't say that. He just chose to do that because he had a temper, <laughs> like some of us do. <laughs> right? And plus, when even if he was in the right spirit, like, like Elijah, think of Elijah when he called fire down and burned up like 150 people, 100 people, 200, no, 100, two groups of 50 people, Elijah calls fire, whoosh, burns them up. He was actually, I, I, I mean, I think he was actually with God in that because these were evil armies and they were trying to destroy uh, God's kingdom, whatever. But in the new covenant, when the disciples of Jesus said, hey, let's call down fire like Elisha did on these guys because they don't like you. Jesus is like, you don't know what spirit you're partnering with. Yeah. So even if Elisha was in the right, we don't, part, we don't do that in the new covenant. And then it, the very next thing Jesus said was, you don't know what spirit you are of. The son of man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. So there's a huge shift now in the kingdom. We don't get to release evil over people. That is not something we do. And if, you're, and if you want to do that to someone or you, you have hateful thoughts towards someone and you hope bad stuff happens to them, you need to repent. If you find yourself somewhat rejoicing when bad stuff happens to people, you need to repent. You're acting like the devil. Right? We, we are not, we are not, we cannot partner with that kind of stuff. We cannot, especially right now. This is a vital time on the earth. God is ready to release his kingdom in a powerful way, and he needs us to get our act right. He needs us to get our act right. He needs us to speak right words. It says in Proverbs 23 that, that uh, it's actually, just go ahead and turn there real quick, because I, I kind of like it. It's a cool verse. It's like we can make God happy by how we speak. Proverbs 23, uh, verse 16. Actually, uh, verse 15 and 16. It says, my son, if your heart be wise, my heart shall rejoice. Yes, everything in me will celebrate when you speak what is right. <laughs> That's, I feel like that's coming straight from the Father. Like everything in him will rejoice, will celebrate when we learn how to control what comes out of our mouths. And, and it starts by controlling what we partner with. You can't control, you can't keep thoughts from coming at you, right? There's that whole thing, like they say, you can't keep birds from flying over your head, but you can keep them from building a nest in your hair, <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> the thought, the agreement, the spoken word. Those three things can be a three-headed monster or a three-fold blessing. We get to choose what kind of arrows we release. Thoughts, the agreement, and the spoken word. Remember that for this year, for the rest of your life. <laughs> As long as you're in the kingdom of God, remember that. And I mean, this, that just came to me this week. I actually never thought of that before. Um, but yeah, it's kind of like you, you're forging something with those three things. You're forging a weapon. You're forging a weapon of righteousness or a weapon of destruction. And uh, here's, a, here's an interesting thing, and uh, Justin has talked about about that about this before that the more authority we have the greater our words will be like he's talked about how 
he's been praying for this authority and he's noticed different things where God's like, you know, I'm, he does, God doesn't give us the authority we want all, the, all at once because we might not be ready for it yet, right? And we might be releasing the wrong things. Look at uh, Job uh, chapter 3. Because this, this, the whole authority thing, this is true for, for both kingdoms, whether you're in the kingdom of darkness or the kingdom of light. Those with greater authority, their words will do more damage. That's, true. that's why, that's why some, some people who like are witches or whatever, they're just like, they're, they're nothing, right? And then you have some who are, who are going and cursing cities and bringing all kind of evil, right? And that's a real thing. That kind of stuff really happens. Let me see. Job 3. This is when Job is complaining about his life. He's actually cursing the day he was born. <laughs> Don't ever do that. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff in the book of Job that actually most of the book of Job is just like people saying stuff that they just shouldn't say, <laughs> right? Some of it is actually true. There's actually a lot of true stuff that is spoken, especially by his friends, but it's for the wrong situation. Your words have to be timely, right? If I come to someone with something that is true, but it's out of context, it can't, God's not going to partner with that word, right? Because these guys were saying, you know, they think Job's in sin. So they're like, you're in sin and God judges the wicked. Bad things happen to the wicked, which is true, right? Bad things happen to wicked people. But the first verse in the Bible says that Job was a righteous man. So it's like their words were totally, there was truth in it, but they just misapplied the, the it was just misapplied. Anyway. Huge side note. So in Job 3, uh, verse 6, he's cursing the day he was born. He says, uh, let that night be blotted off the calendar, never again to be counted among the days of the year, blah, blah, blah. Verse 8, let those who are, I don't want to read too much of this, it's depressing. <laughs> <laughs> let those who are experts at cursing, whose cursing could rouse Leviathan, let them curse the day I was born. <laughs> But see, when I read that just recently, I was like, whoa, wait a second. So there's like different levels of cursing of people who do curses, right? Some people's curses can rouse Leviathan. This is, Leviathan is like seen as like the greatest evil. <laughs> so some people's curse words can, can actually rouse the greatest powers of darkness over someone, over a, a family, over a city, over a nation, Wonder why some uh, some parts of the world are so dark. Maybe some of these Leviathan rousers are speaking, <laughs> right? <laughs> Haiti, yeah. I mean, think of Haiti, man. That's one of the saddest places on the planet. There's definitely some people there rousing Leviathan. I guarantee it. And that's just that's a picture of of what you know what can happen. When, when someone has authority and they misuse it, right? Um, but uh, like I said, you don't, this doesn't mean you have to be afraid because, like I said, a, causeless, a curse without cause will never find its mark, no matter how big it is. If you abide in Christ, you have a wall of fire around you that will completely devour Leviathan. <laughs> so this is, this is not to scare you. If it scares you into the presence of God, good. <laughs> because that's our only hope, our only weapon against uh, the powers of darkness, right? When, when you abide in Christ, there's nothing that can come against you. When you truly abide in Jesus, you, you're above all this stuff. You're on another level. You're in a different realm. Satan can't touch that realm. I, had, I, I don't know if I've, some of you may have heard this dream, but I actually had a dream once where I actually killed Satan because I was abiding in the right realm. He was chasing after me. He couldn't even see me. He was walking right by me, looking for me. 
because he was not in my realm. We fly higher, right, when we walk in the spirit. So don't, don't be discouraged or, or don't be afraid by any of this. But, um, but if you're not abiding in Christ, then you definitely need to, right? Let's see, I'll look at uh, Matthew 17, verse, uh, verse 14. So this is when Jesus uh, heals the demon-possessed boy. At the foot of the mountain, a large crowd was waiting for them. A man came and knelt before Jesus and said, Lord, have mercy on my son. He has seizures and suffers terribly. He often falls into the fire or the water. So I brought him to your disciples, but they couldn't heal him. We've all been there before, right? You pray for someone and you don't, they don't get healed or the demon's still in that person. Yeah. Got to contend. Jesus said, you faithless and corrupt people. <laughs> he didn't say, oh, that's okay. You tried. <laughs> he actually gets frustrated when we don't have faith, right? <laughs> I mean, he, he's not going to condemn you, but, but especially these guys. I mean, they've been walking with him. They've been seeing. I mean, they saw him do so many miracles, heal multitudes of people. And he's like, and you can't cast this demon out? Come on, guys. Right? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you faithless and corrupt people. How long must I be with you? How long must I put up with you? I'm ready to go back to my father. <laughs> How long is my ministry, Lord? Another year? <laughs> he only, his ministry was only three years. I'm like, maybe he couldn't put up with it that much or something. <laughs> Look, let's do this real quick and get me out of here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm done hurting cats. <laughs> I mean, you have to understand, he walked as a man, right? So he did experience frustration. He struggled with patience. He struggled with, like, uh, like understanding when we don't have faith, <laughs> right? Does that make sense? He walked as a man. Doesn't mean he, like, sinned in his frustration but he experienced frustration just like we do because he came down here as a man and he was like he's like so i'm in your shoes if if i was you and i saw me do all these miracles something would change <laughs> right he's like why aren't you guys changing <laughs> Yeah, yeah. How could you be talking about bread? We just fed 5,000 people, guys. Did you not get the sign? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Peter, shut up. <laughs> I'm going to go up on top of a mountain and talk to someone who knows, who knows how to believe. <laughs> talk to the Father. <laughs> Verse 18. Then Jesus rebuked the demon and the boy, and it left him. 19. Afterward, the disciples asked him privately, why couldn't we cast it out? You don't have enough faith, he told them. I tell you the truth, if you had faith even as small as a mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it would move. Nothing would be impossible. So we need to, those are the kind of words, we need to hear Partner with faith and release those words. Amen. Right? When we speak from that place, mountains move. Amen. This is part of what, what Gwen is with the whole prayer thing. This is part of that because prayer is actually releasing words and shifting things, shifting families, shifting cities, yeah. shifting churches, marriages, nations. Yeah. Super powerful. And then uh, 20, Matthew 21, uh, verse 21 and 22. I think that's like a similar one. Yeah, yeah well, I'll just look at uh, verse 22. It says, you can, when you believe, it says you can pray for anything. And if you have faith, you will receive it. So start, start, start dreaming with God and start speaking, praying for, for things to happen. 
the uh, turn to Matthew 12, 36 and 37. says, uh, and I tell you this, you must give an account on judgment day for every idle word you speak. The words you say will either acquit you or condemn you. The King James says, uh, by your words, you will be justified and by your words, you will be condemned. And because when we when we speak evil things and we release demonic things over people's lives and bad stuff happens to those people, see in the spirit like. In heaven, they see what happened, right? On earth, we just think we're speaking words. But in the spirit, there's other stuff going on that you probably don't know about. But on judgment day, you will find out about. Hey, you see how this happened to this person? It's because you were speaking such and such about them. What? Yeah. Yeah, and you're going to be judged for that, right? So we need the fear of God with this stuff. I mean, with, our, with what we partner with and how we speak, we need the fear of the Lord. I mean, he literally says, by your words, you will be justified, and by your words, you will be condemned. That's heavy. I don't know what you, how you feel about that, but to me, that's pretty darn heavy. And I want to be super careful about how I speak about people and even how I think about people. Because if you're partnering with evil thoughts, then... You're already releasing stuff. You're already releasing stuff. If you don't, if the, if you don't rebuke those evil thoughts when they come, and you you have hateful thoughts about whatever, and you if you partner with it, you're already going down. It's just like Jesus said: if a man looks at a woman lustfully, he's already committed adultery, right? So and if we and if we speak blessings over people, and that's the awesome thing, especially people who are who are irking us, right? <laughs> people who are getting on your nerves. When you when you pray blessing over them and you do the opposite of what your flesh wants to do, then you'll be rewarded on judgment day for releasing blessings over people. By your words you will be justified, it says. I mean, that's pretty powerful. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be speaking blessings over people, right? Even when people are like just pissing you off, <laughs> right? A few years ago, a few years ago, the Lord gave me a prayer for people when they're doing that. And, and you want to pray bad things to happen to them. The Lord said, you know what? Just pray that I would teach them the error of their way. Just leave it in my hands. And, and I started doing that. And I've actually seen total situations, total lives turned around by just releasing that prayer over people. I had a, I had a student who was um, one of our students uh, when we were youth pastors. And uh, he, was, he was one of our worship leaders. He was a drummer. He was a really good drummer. And uh, you know who I'm, you guys, you know who I'm talking about. He, he was just, he was starting a party and he was starting to just, he was going to raves and doing, I don't know if he was doing like crazy drugs, but he was smoking a lot of weed, drinking, just, and you know, other kids knew about it. And I'm like, you know what? I can't have you on the worship team if you're going to be doing this. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm not even asking you to turn everything around like right now. I'm just asking you to try, right? Because he's like 16, 17. Like, I'm not going to expect him to just walk perfectly right now. But I'm like, if you will just try, because right now I can tell you're not even trying. But if you'll just try to walk with God, then I'm okay with you struggling a little bit because we, we can work that out. I was like, are you willing to try? He's like, actually, right now, I just, I'm not. I don't feel like I even have it in me to even try. And I'm like, well, you can't be on the worship team anymore. And, and he got really mad at me. And he, he spent like a whole year where he didn't really talk to me very much. And so I started praying that over him. Lord, show him the error of his way. And then about a, a year after he graduated from high school, he came back to me and, and thanked me <laughs> for kicking him off the worship team. And, uh, and he said, if it wasn't for you, if you didn't do that, then God would have never got a hold of my heart. And, and he's from this area. And every time he comes back and visits, 
He calls me up and wants to hang out. I just hung out with him uh, a week ago, and, uh, and he's doing awesome. He's like leading ministry. He's leading a ministry right now. And yeah, I totally forgot what my point was sharing that, but, but it was good. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Pray that over people, <laughs> that God will teach them the error of their way. <laughs> it's not your job to do that by going and talking about that person to other people to try to get other people to, to, be met, to not like that person. We see that with my, with my daughter or her middle school friends. They, they, they have all these drama issues. And they, if I don't like that person, then, then I'm going to go and talk to all these people and let's not like that person over there. And my daughter's like, I'm, you can't tell me who to like or who not to like. And I'm like, yeah, you tell them. <laughs> but that's what middle schoolers do. I'm, it turns out, yeah, adults do too, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> All right, we're, we're almost we're wrapping it up here. I just, I didn't have a lot. I, I just felt like I just wanted to pew, shoot this arrow. What's that? You're getting convicted. <laughs> I, was, I got convicted as I was right. I mean, we're all, we all do this stuff. We just got to be more mindful of it. Matthew 15, 11. Matthew 15, 11. <clears throat> Jesus said, it's not what goes into your mouth that defiles you. What defiles you are the words that come out of your mouth. <clears throat> so, speaking evil is actually a lot worse than watching a rated R movie. I don't really watch rated R movies because I just don't. <laughs> but you actually... Listening to certain types of music, you know, I'm really picky about the music I listen to. I don't want to hear shoot 'em up, bang bang, you sell dope, shoot your mama, do all this crazy stuff like I like I used to listen to. <laughs> I used to listen to some horrid music, okay, <laughs> which was one of the reasons why I was in such a dark place when I was a teenager. It was 92.6 percent of it was the music I was listening to. <laughs> 92.6, yep. <laughs> yeah, don't go to that channel. <laughs> but uh, verse, look at verse 17. Anything you eat passes through the stomach and then goes out into the sewer. But the words you speak come from the heart. That's what defiles you. For from the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, all these bad things. These are what defile you, not eating with unwashed hands. So it's like, you know, we, we can be religious sometimes, right? That's what he's talking about. Don't be so religious. I don't care what kind of food you're eating. I want you to speak pure words, Amen. right? Amen. Because we, there's, religion will, will do something that makes you look holy, but then it'll turn and completely slander someone. Yeah. He's like, I don't care what you're doing. What are you, what are you saying? What are you partnering with? That's what I really care about. I don't care if you go to church on Saturday because you're keeping the Sabbath. That's not going to make you holy. Yeah, right? I don't care if you go to church on Sunday because that's what most Christians do. If you're not speaking the right word, you're in the wrong. Yeah, if you're not partnering with, with the right stuff in your heart, you're in the wrong. And this, I mean, when I was talking about music and all that kind of stuff, you know, it's, we always tell our kids, you, our daughter, she likes to listen to BTS, which is like this uh, Korean boy band. Not Japanese. My daughter always corrects me. Like, Shandeen, your Japanese guys are on. They're not Japanese. They're Korean. <laughs> 
I get confused because these kids nowadays, they all like Japanese stuff. Yeah, they like Asian stuff, but Japanese is like really popular nowadays for some reason. But um, where's Mayumi? Is Mayumi here? Yeah, Mayumi's happy. She's like, finally, you guys all realize how cool we are. <laughs> now the whole world wants to be Japanese, right? They got more than just sushi. <laughs> they got guretama. <laughs> Most of y'all don't even know who guretama is. Look him up. But, but anyway, you know, we, we let our kids listen to secular music. As long as it's not like, we're not going to have like weird, crazy, bad stuff coming in the house. But, but as long, and we also teach her about idolatry, right? Like, it's okay if you listen to this stuff, but don't make these guys an idol, right? And so I feel like there's, a, there's just a level of, of wisdom in the church that, that we, we need. Because we, we're going to deal with worldly stuff. It's okay to like certain things in the world, Right? It's okay to, to partake of certain things in the world as long as it doesn't come, as long as you don't let it inside your heart and then it starts to, right? Does that make sense? That's where you draw the line. If you're watching something, reading something, listening to something, and then you start to partner with something and release something, that's how you know, okay, that's something that I shouldn't be listening to. Does this make sense? Yeah, I think it's I think it's just important to to know these lines, especially when you're raising kids, because you don't want to just say everything that's not in in church is bad, right? But you want to teach them to to decipher between that stuff, right? Like I want my kids to know darkness from light. I want my kids to be able to be sensitive to the presence of God, and to be sensitive to when there's darkness around. Because kids can be really naive and they can, they can partner with stuff unknowingly and bring stuff into their lives. So we got to teach them how to, how to decipher. Amen. That's what, and that's what Jesus is doing here with his disciples. Guys, I don't, it's not so much about what goes inside of you. It, what, it's what comes out of you. So he's not saying it's, you can let anything in you that you want. He's saying if something comes in you and it causes bad to come out of you, get rid of it. Does that make sense? So that's why when I got when I got saved, I got rid of all my Christian. I mean, not Christian. I got rid of all my gangster rap I was listening to, because like I said, that stuff was like straight from hell. I mean, and I was I was just in my room one day, and God just asked me a question. He said, "Hey, um, these guys that you're listening to, where do you think they're going? Like, where do you think their path is leading them? Like, if they were to die today." Where do you think they would end up? I'm like, hell. And he's like, okay, well then why are you letting them influence you? Why are you still listening to this? If you're going a different path, they're going that way. And I was actually acting out what I was listening to. That's what, me, I'm, that's what most gang members do. They act out music. If you eliminated gangster rap from the world, you probably would eliminate gangs. <laughs> And, and violence in inner cities. Most of what these guys are doing is because of the music they're listening to. Guaranteed. Tupac influenced a whole generation. He did. And, and other guys that, that were in that era. Yeah, and they're still worshiping him. Still to this day, he's been dead since 1996. Kind of imagine if he was a kingdom-minded person, how much influence he could have had all over the world. All right, I think I have just one more verse, and then we'll wrap it up. Yeah, it's real quiet in here. I know, I kind of miss that. I miss hearing the twins back there babbling. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, yeah, we just speak peace over those babies right now in Jesus' name, healing over them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no more sickness. I just pray that over all of us. There's been just a few people who have gotten sick just in the church, and yeah, we just pray peace over, over this house. 
Proverbs 16.10. This, this is a really good one to finish with. I'm going to read a part of it in the King James and then the other part in the New Living just because I can do that. <laughs> it says, a divine sentence is on the lips of the king. He must never judge unfairly. In other words, another version says, he must never betray justice with his mouth. A divine sentence is on the lips of a king. Think about that for a second. When, when people are in places of like authority, especially in like say in the church, right? In the church, this is one reason why so many people in, in America are like, have been wounded by churches. It's because some pastor said something or did something, who knows? And when, it, when, a, when a decision or a word is spoken by a person in authority, even though it might not be in line with God's heart, God has given his authority to, to us. And so when we say things and do things, it's as if God is taking that thing and planting it right on that person's life. It's as if God is doing that, even though he might not be actually partnering with it. But he's given us authority. It's like God has given us a big, huge baseball bat, which has God's authority written on it. If we hit someone with that bat, it's going to feel like it came straight from God because it has his authority on it. And that's why it's so, I mean, we can use the authority God has given us for evil or for good. This is why Satan tempted Jesus to turn stones into bread. Use the power that God has given you to feed yourself, to, to make yourself happy, to make yourself comfortable. That's why Jesus didn't do it. Even after he had been, he hadn't eaten for 40 days, he knew what he would have been partnering with if he would have turned those stones into bread. He knew he would have been using his authority for fleshly purposes. That's why he didn't do it. That's why we as as Children of God in the kingdom, especially us in leadership, have to be super careful about how we deal with people because we could very well be releasing a divine blow on people's lives. Some people never receive healing from the wounds they suffer in church, right? They got wounded by someone at church when they were young and that just followed them for the rest of their life. Some even tried to get healed and never were able to because that those are huge, huge blows. When people are releasing divine sentences and then God's not behind it, we can do some serious damage. The other side is true too. When we, when, we, when we get in the flow of God and we release what he's releasing, then the opposite happens. We see fruit happen in people's lives. We see, we see lives change. I mean, Gwen sees countless people delivered from from so many different things in her inner healing sessions and that's why we encourage people because we see that she's a person who uses her authority she's taking her baseball bat and she's hitting the demons that are on people's shoulders <laughs> boom she knows how to hit. She knows where her target's at. She's not swinging at people and, and wounding people. She's, she's doing damage to the kingdom of darkness. And that's the kind of things that we want to be doing in the kingdom. We want to be setting people free, not making the chains tighter. <laughs> not putting new chains on people, right? <laughs> this is where the fear of the Lord comes in in leadership, right? Because when you fear God, you know that, hey, I'm going to be really careful. This is where the fear of the Lord comes in, in parenting. Because it's the same with, it's more so with parents. I mean, I mean, let's talk about that for a second. Like, forget about church. How are you treating your kids? I mean, that's, that's even more, I mean, I can't, we can't even, there's not enough time to talk about how much damage has been done to people because of parents, Right? So as parents, we really got to operate in the fear of God about how the words we speak to our kids. If you can't, if you're going to speak something that's, that might do damage, just shut your mouth, go in your room, throw something at the wall, <laughs> kick a chair, 
do something. Just don't speak a curse over your children. <laughs> yeah, pray in the spirit. Yeah, do that. That's better. <laughs> That's, she, I said what I would do. She said what she would do. I would throw something, kick something. She would pray in the spirit. <laughs> Wisdom cries out. <laughs> All right, last thing. Something's breaking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> last one, last one, seriously. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I still got one minute left. I set a timer for myself to see if, just to see if I could do this in 50 minutes. I'm like, let me see if I could do this in 50 minutes. <laughs> Second uh, Samuel twenty three. But just so you guys know, those rules, the fifty minute thing, that doesn't apply to Justin Gingrich. I said I do that for myself. He gets seventy five minutes. Okay. <laughs> just so you guys were wondering why he speaks longer than me sometimes, it's because he has di we have different rules. Mine is fifty, his is seventy five. You should be like, oh. That's why he speaks longer. <laughs> I just blew my 50. I know, right? No, I got, I got 20 seconds left. I'm going to blow it. <laughs> Second Samuel 23. These are the last words of David. I love, this is so awesome. David was so such an awesome guy, even though he did a lot of stupid stuff. He was, we all do stupid stuff, right? His heart was just after God, and that's, what, that's why he's a hero. David, the son of Jesse, speaks. David, the man who was raised on high. David, the man anointed by the God of Jacob. David, the sweet psalmist of Israel. The spirit of the, this is him speaking now. The spirit of the Lord speaks through me. His words are upon my tongue. Let that be true for all of us. The spirit of the Lord speaks through me. His words are on my tongue. Let's say that. Let's say that of the Lord speaks through me. His words are upon my tongue. Whew. Yeah. The God of Israel spoke. The rock of Israel said to me, the one who rules righteously, who rules in the fear of God, is like the light of morning at sunrise, like a morning without clouds, like the gleaming of the sun on the grass after the rain. May, may we all be like that wherever we go. Wherever we go, may we be like people who just bring heaven's presence into wherever we're at. Wherever we're at, especially if, we, if we're in places of authority, if we have a business and we have people up under us, may we, be, may, be, may we rule in a way that just brings a blessing. And they have a joy. They have joy coming to work every day. They have joy being in your presence because, because every time you show up, the darkness flees and the sun rises. They can, they can think clearly. They can, feel, they can feel life and joy because you're around. Because the Spirit of God speaks through you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Lord, I, I pray that that would be the testimony of every person in this place. That we would be people with your word on our tongue, Lord. And just like Isaiah, when he, when he saw the vision the angel, the seraphim, with the, took the coals from the altar and purged his lips. Lord, I pray right now, just put your hand over your mouth. Just touch your lips. Lord, let there be a purging that comes on our lips, Lord. That everything that comes out of our mouth would, be, would bring you glory. That we would not partner and release evil things with our words, Lord but that we would partner with heaven 
and release heaven into earth by what we speak. And let our words be a blessing to our city, to our family, to our church, to this nation. Just wake us up, Lord. Set a guard over our mouths. Let no evil thing come forth, God. Let the words of our mouths be, be pure and holy and righteous. Purify our hearts. Thank you. So I was sitting there and I just want to, it's our turn now. We're going to do a real quick activation, okay? We're going to encounter Jesus right now. I was just reminded, the Lord was just saying, don't have hard hearts. Don't be like the word that fell on the hard ground and the birds immediately took it away from you because deception is hearing but not doing deception in our lives looks like hearing but not doing and I was remembering that Pastor Yoon the heavenly man said that we are immune to sermons we hear so many messages we become immune and we don't even take it in anymore so I want everybody to close their eyes right now Jesus, come. Jesus, come right now. And I just want you to go in your imagination to your favorite place on the planet. Go to your favorite place. It might be the alpine meadows. It might be a beach. It might be a garden. It might be in the middle of the woods. Go to your favorite place on the planet right now. And when you get to that place, just invite Jesus into that place. Say, Jesus, come right now. Come be with me here in this place. And I just want you to wait and watch how you feel or sense or see him there with you. Come, Jesus, be with me right now. What's he doing right now? Are you arm in arm? Are you sitting across from each other? Are you walking through the meadow? Does he take your hand? What is he, what is he doing right now with you? Jesus, I just want to ask you a question. Would you show me right now anyone that I am bringing death to with my words? Would you show me what my words, where they're bringing wounding to someone right now? Maybe it's my spouse. Maybe it's my child. Maybe we're cursing our nation. Jesus, just show us right now where we're bringing death with our words or wounding with our words. shows you something just ask his forgiveness right now Jesus I repent I am so sorry for speaking a false identity over this person I'm so sorry for speaking words of Satan over this person words of accusation forgive me father I repent now I want you to stay in this place 
And I want you to picture yourself handing those words, handing that stuff, that junk, hand it to Jesus right now. Just hand it to him. Give it to him. Jesus, what are you going to do with that? What are you going to do with that? Just watch him and see what he wants to do with what you've given him. Sometimes he takes things into himself. Sometimes he dumps the wheelbarrow full of stuff you gave him. Whatever it is, just watch and see what he wants to do. And the last thing, Jesus, what do, what do you want me to know? What do you want me to know? Who do you say I am, Jesus? What do you want me to know? You can do this any time, any place, with any situation. And Jesus wants to meet you and he wants to talk to you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are so good. So good. Thank you. Well, you can uh, stay in this place and... Just let the Lord continue to minister to you. You can leave if you need to leave. You know, if you want someone to pray for you, some of us will be up here up front.